How fast is too fast in a relationship? And for that matter, how slow is too slow? Identifying the pace of the relationship can be a fascinating and very informative process. I want to qualify right now that I'm not going to be talking about the notion of sex and intimacy in this video. And the reason I choose not to is because how precious or important or unimportant or casual the act of sex and intercourse is varies from person to person. And so when they begin or when they don't begin is really up to them and the arrangement of the couple. Sometimes that does affect the pace of the relationship, sometimes that does not. But that is a measure of individual compatibility and not what I'm going to be talking about today. As many of you Scarlet Moon viewers and subscribers out there probably know, I enjoy talking about the brain. And so I'm going to be discussing cognitive and behavioral patterns and how that actually can be shown over time with an individual and what is going on when a person is pushing to have a relationship too fast or too slow. Now I want to say right now there are little chunks of time that we can play with to understand where is perhaps too fast and where is perhaps too slow based on the maturity of the relationship. Of course, use discretion and critical thinking. There are always minor exceptions as well as fluidity in all things. There is never a hard and fast rule and if they made a guidebook for life it would be wrong. So let's have a good look at this and just see if we can understand, you know, what you can look for to see if an individual is going too fast in relationship and we need to decelerate, or if they're going too slow and we might need to accelerate. Or perhaps, if a person is going too fast, you may feel like it's time to leave. Or if a person is, time to, is going too slow, you may feel it's time to keep your options open. When it comes to behavioral patterns of human beings, most of the time Behavioral patterns will reach a full circle within about 90 days, so three months, roughly. And so a quarter of the year, most people will go through their whole behavioral cycle. And this can go from everywhere to good days, to bad days, excited, depressed, happy, sad. You know, we get to see what's going on, what they do when they're angry, what they do when they feel threatened, what they do when they feel really happy, when they feel really, you know, aroused and excited. We get to see all of that in that first three months. And the other thing about the first three months is that you're also getting that person on their best behavior. This is the honeymoon phase. People have a tendency to go this far before splitting up. A lot of people do split up right at three months because you don't really get to know the full person until we get to three months. And you don't really know the full person then, but you most certainly don't get to know the, the real person. The real person doesn't start integrating until after three months. From four to seven months is then the window where we look and see, well, are we going too slow? Are we going too slow in this relationship or this coupling? Because from four to seven months, we kind of have another group of, you know, where we've been, we just, you know, maybe we're approaching or just broke the half a year mark. Time to start knowing what we're doing, where we're going, where we want to be. So how do you know when you are going too fast in a relationship? Well, let's identify some key points. And once again, I'm not going to be talking about sex. Number one, you come into this with a lot of long-term plans. Now, it's okay to know what you want. It's okay to be concrete and grounded in what you want. If you're looking for a marriage partner, if you're looking to start a family, if you're looking to build a home, that is great. That is fine. That is totally fine. However, realize that in that first three months, you're not going to know if this is a suitable partner for this entirely. And you might not know if this individual is telling you the whole truth. Because again, during that honeymoon phase of the first three months, people tend to be on their best behavior. This is also a time to not bring those plans into the fold. It's not time to invest in those plans with that individual in mind within the first three months. That is a recipe for disappointment. Because again, we may end up feeling betrayed, a person may end up feeling like they were lied to. Things are too inconsistent. We have not witnessed the full package of behavioral patterns. And for that matter, that other person has not witnessed them in you either. Separation anxiety. If an individual is basically 
having a really hard time giving you your space at month two. Maybe you feel like they get upset when you do not call or text them frequently. You may want to let them know that you still like them, but they're moving way too quickly. Separation anxiety that early in the game is sort of a, a little bit of an alert for another issue that's going on with that individual. They may be concerned or still dealing with a hurt or a bruise from a past relationship or a past disappointment. It's still important to assert a boundary there, though, because you do not want to be in a situation where you are dating them and their ex, you want to be dating them. You know, and so we want to make sure that you are not placating into that. The other situation that can come with separation anxiety is that an individual may feel that time spent apart basically means more time to grow apart, which does indicate, again, this individual may be dealing with some trust or abandonment issues, or maybe even some latent control issues spurned by hurt or disappointment in the past, and it would be important to inform them that they are, again, rushing this relationship. Availability shifts. This is a big one. If an individual suddenly goes from needing to plan ahead to being available at the drop of a hat, this individual is compromising other relationships and other priorities and basically their own life in order to actually curb what we just talked about, a separation anxiety, or to become too available to the person that they're dating. Again, between zero and three months, this is basically a lot to start putting on the table and a lot to start chopping off and compartmentalizing. In fact, it's less than a quarter of a year. What happens at that point is that this person no longer is allowing themselves to have a life that they can bring to the relationship and nurture with their partner. A good relationship is when both individuals have their own lives and then they enrich the relationship together. But when one decides not to have a life, then it's up to this one individual, the opposite partner, and their life to somehow hold everything up. And that is way too much pressure. That is a lot of pressure to put on an individual at six, seven, eight, even nine weeks. So don't let that pressure be put on you to do that. Premature social integration. This is kind of an interesting one because while we may meet partners through friends or through family members, it's not always the case. And if we are meeting an individual on our own, you know, it's important to realize that if a person is trying to, again, integrate themselves into family or into friend structures very early, they are attempting to actually ground themselves, again, to build a support system for the relationship around themselves. And again, it may be important to sort of reinforce that they need to actually have their own support system outside of this relationship or that affiliated with this relationship. The reason for this is that the individual, again, is lacking faith in the long-term opportunity. So they may actually be trying to look for confirmation, validation, and affirmation of long-term potential in this relationship by putting the, pr the pressure of a five-year relationship into a three-month period. And so we have to reassure them that they don't need to do that and that it's perfectly fine that we don't this early. Now what about going too slow? When we're going too slow, we're going to look at the point between four and seven months into the relationship. And this could be something simple and something that a lot of people don't really pay attention to, but if, it, if the relationship is still feeling fairly impersonal at month six and seven, or if we haven't even talked about being in a relationship by month four or five, we're probably going fairly slow. The first point about a relationship going too slow is if in this time between months four and seven, we're still fairly unfamiliar. You know, if you don't really know a person enough to know maybe when their birthday is, what their favorite movie is, 
you know, what's their favorite food, what are they allergic to, you know, fun little facts like that. If that is completely clueless, then the individual who, is, who doesn't know is perhaps moving too slow and not investing enough time and priority into this courtship. This can also be kind of a strange sort of area to be in because what is too personal and not too personal? But being unfamiliar with the just the most basic and superficial facts about each other might be a sign that somebody is perhaps just a little bit too slow. And this isn't about being forgetful. Everyone can be forgetful. I have had boyfriends that just forgot my birthday despite the fact that it's 9-11. And, you know, they still remember what my favorite movie is. They still remember what my favorite book and my favorite food and you know, all that kind of stuff. So there's, there's, this, there's room to play. You know, of course nothing's going to be 100% exacting and nobody should have a tick box with this. But, you know, just, just think about that. No social integration. If at months four, five, and six, an individual has not introduced their BFF to the person they're dating, that might be a clue that they are a little bit unsure about the long-term opportunities of this relationship. If we have not actually integrated at least very close friends, or at least casual acquaintances, maybe gone on a group date or two, gone out to a group party, you know, gone out as dates to a party, that might be a clue that this is going a bit too slow. The relationship itself may not be official at months four and five, and that's perfectly fine, but it would definitely need to at least be publicly known that these two people are seeing each other. It's kind of important to see where, you know, again, if we're unfamiliar, if we're practically strangers, or if we're not even meeting each other's friends, you know, it's kind of like, well, what's going on here? Consistent lack of availability. Being too available is, you know, is one thing in the beginning of a relationship. But if at months four, five, six, and seven, we still have to wait two to three weeks to see somebody that we're seeing, this, and we're not both busy, you know, and this is kind of, we're not making time for each other at months four, five, six, and seven, this is a sign that, again, the relationship is kind of dragging its feet. Now, if this is, of course, mutually agreed upon, this should already be known to everyone who's watching. If this is mutually okay be between both partners, of course, go ahead and do it. Go at your own pace. But I think that if this is not mutually agreed upon, then this is a sign that there is a problem with going too slow. Maybe a need to kind of think about how serious this thing really is. Communication lapses. Another issue at this point in time is, yeah, this communication lapse. What is happening with this person's availability is one thing, but if they're not going to inform their partner that they're going out of town on holiday for two weeks, you know, that's kind of an important piece of information to know. You know, so if communication lapses like that are happening about big changes, shifts, events, and things like that, you know, if you're dating somebody and you find out his, you know, God forbid his father passed away and you didn't know, that's kind of a big thing. That kind of lets you know where you fit on the phone tree. When you have communication lapses like going to Tahiti for two weeks on holiday, sorry, I'm, on the pl I'm about to get on the plane, I forgot to mention it, then we gotta got a problem. And finally, no conceptualization of even short-term goals. And maybe long-term goals are not ready at months five, six, and seven, especially if you're younger. Maybe talking about things like marriage and children is still kind of early at that point in time. But if we're not talking about planning on being in an official relationship, what we call an official relationship, or if we're going in that direction towards some kind of romantic commitment, even if you know we're not, we're, we're not putting marriage on the table at this point in time, then we are going a bit slow. Half a year has gone by. Conceptualization of at least steps four and five should be discussed, even if we're not going to stop about talk about steps nine and ten just yet. But that's kind of an idea or a little rundown about what happens if things go too slow. Now, like I said, obviously, if you find a mutually agreed upon, functional, safe, secure, and happy pace for your partner and you, that's what's really important. But this can be a really good thing to consider, especially if there is an issue with a lapse in timing or perhaps even again a situation where a person is going too fast or going too slow. 
Typically in instances where a relationship is going too slow, the relationship individuals will grow apart, and maybe that is for the best. You know, if, if a relationship goes too slow for too long, the ships part ways. If a relationship goes too fast, too soon, between zero and three months, that is a recipe for a lot of drama and a lot of negativity and fighting. So that can create a really unstable and, you know, and, and, and harmful atmosphere, especially if there's a lot of pressure on this to succeed so early. So again, always find the balance when it comes to what you're going to do with your priorities. Always keep your goals in mind. Just keep in mind that you've got a long time to achieve them. There's no such thing as being in a good, toxic relationship. Okay? It's always better to be single than in a relationship that hurts you or the relationship that makes you feel like less of a person. And do not let yourself feel pressured to get into anything too fast or stick around for anything that is not going anywhere. Alright? I'll talk to you later.